This is a star. It has a few planets in its orbit. And this is a star without planets. For astronomers who want to find exoplanets, there's a world, or two or three, of difference between these two stars. But as far as we can see with the naked eye, there's barely any difference between the two stars. Planets? Not visible at all. So how do we even know other planets are out there? The biggest problem with detecting exoplanets is that planets are, on the scale of space, small and dark. They're pretty impossible to see from Earth with the technology we currently have. What we can see are the stars they orbit. So if we can distinguish a star with a planet from a star without, we can find exoplanets. But how do we do that? It turns out the solution is a simple method that comes straight out of basic physics. Let's talk about center of mass. Every system has a center of mass, a point that's the average position of all the mass. You could think of it as the point the system balances around. And if there's no external force, then the center of mass won't change its velocity. It'll continue at the same speed in the same direction. So think about if there's a banana spinning in empty space. There's no force acting on it, so its center of mass won't be spinning. It would have to change its velocity to do that. Every other point on the banana will be spinning about the center of mass, which moves at some constant speed in a single direction. And now consider a planet going around its star as a single system. The system is rotating in free space, no external forces, so it must be rotating about its center of mass. And where is the center of mass for the star-planet system? Well, the star is much heavier than the planet, so the center of mass will be much closer to the center of the star than the center of the planet. But the planet is there, so the center of mass will be slightly off from the star's center. And that means that the star must be making tiny revolutions about some point in space. This makes sense. Just like the star's gravitational tug makes the planet move in circles, the planet's gravitational tug makes the star move in circles too. Just much smaller circles. But we can detect those tiny revolutions. Sometimes. If we're lucky, then Earth happens to be in the same plane as the star's revolutions, so that as the star traces out little circles, it appears to be going back and forth. And going back and forth is something that's easy to detect, thanks to the Doppler effect. When the star is moving towards the Earth, the light it emits appears a little bluer, and when it's moving away from the Earth, the light looks a little redder. So if astronomers see the light from a star periodically shifting red and blue, they can infer that the star is going back and forth, and that's compelling evidence that it has a planet in its orbit. This method was one of the first astronomers used to successfully detect exoplanets, and other methods are still often supplemented with this one. And it all comes out of center of mass. So keep that in mind next time you're looking at the night sky, wondering what else might be out there.